Eight minutes to the bell. Stocks mixed, but it still is better than where we are earlier in the session when equities rolled over and the NASDAQ was hurting. Dollar down sizably again today and bonds calm before tomorrow's employment print. Joining me, Lizanne Saunders and Cooper Howard with some big picture thoughts ahead of tomorrow. Lizanne's the chief investment strategist and Cooper's director and fixed income strategist at the Schwab Center for Financial Research. Part two, Lizanne, uh, good to see you again, guys. Uh, you too. Hey, tomorrow, we've obviously got this big report, the dollar finally softening up. I mean, some of these macro pressures seem like they're relieving a little bit here, Lizanne. Am I crazy? No, not, not not crazy. In fact, I think the the rollover uh, so far anyway in the dollar may be tied to the move down in the 10 year from 487 to, to 471. And you add into the mix a pretty significant rollover in oil. And you, at least for now, don't have that uh, kind of trifecta of uh, downward pressure points on the uh, the equity market. And, uh, you know, when we get like yesterday, a slightly weaker than expected ADP number, that that adds to the mix and maybe brings some uh, dip buyers in. All right. Anything uh, notable in bonds here that we should read into, Cooper? Or are we just taking a little bit of a breather, a reset before the big number? You know, I think that that's it. I think that that's probably taking a little bit of a reset. Like Lizanne said, we saw a significant move up in long-term yield. So it's not too surprising to see a little bit of a um, pullback from there. So I think that we're really looking at a um, little bit of a breather right now. Okay. Uh, bonds firming up, uh, dollar down two, and the Fed language seemingly pretty innocuous. Uh, we had Cash Car, we got Mester, we got a few other speakers earlier this week. I mean, I just haven't seen any headlines from these folks, Lizanne. No, I, I think that they're um, probably purposely sort of keeping their cards close to the the vest. There's not a lot of uh, dramatic comments coming from Fed members, and that's just the nature of a Fed that is very data dependent. And we've we've got a lot of data that's coming in between now and the November FOMC meeting. You have seen a little bit of a bouncing around in probabilities for uh, a hike. I looked this morning. I'm not sure if it's changed. You were at about 20% probability of a hike in November, but that's down from somewhere in the mid 30s about a month ago but that's the kind of movement that you could possibly see jump around depending on uh, something as soon as you know tomorrow's jobs report if it's an outlier and as high as the uh, 50 uh, 50s if we stretch it to December by the end of the year at one point I mean to see those odds go down the way they have while yields go up uh, Cooper what's the message that you uh, bring to clients because I'm sure you're getting some questions about that last year it was Fed gets more hawkish rates go up and this time it's hey the Fed's actually not getting more hawkish the markets may be getting less dovish uh, in its expectations but rates going up anyway yeah, so I think that there's a lot of reasons why you can point to for long-term yields moving up. Um, one that I don't think is the reason is a higher Fed fund rate. So like Lizanne had pointed to, probability of a rate hike this cycle is relatively low. Um, and through the year end, it's hovered around 30%. It had been as high as 50%. But I think what the market is interpreting is this higher for longer notion. And where that's being reflected is in the term premium. So the term premium is basically the amount of compensation you get for unknowns in the um, bond market, kind of the volatility of rolling over short-term yields. So there's a lot of reasons why the term premium has spiked up recently, but it is positive. So I think that that's one of the reasons why you're seeing a little bit more volatility could be due to an increase in supply to fund the deficit, could be due to uh, the Fed pulling back its purchases with the balance sheet, uh, China's also pulling back some purchases potentially. Uh, we've seen estimates for growth revise up a little bit. Uh, the Atlanta Fed GDP tracker, it is volatile, but has been above 4% for the past two months. So I think that the culmination of all of that is where you're seeing the move up in longer term yields, or I should say the reason why you're seeing the move up in longer term yields, Oliver. Okay. Yeah, and uh, that, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a, a sort of a nebulous, um, maybe, uh, you know, the term premium, the kind of mystery, the, the, the shadow of the bond market, right? It just basically means uh, there, we should expect a little bit more volatility, right? I mean, I feel like uh, ultimately there is a bit of a mystery here, Lizanne, but we could probably just summarize it by saying, look, bonds are probably going to be more volatile than they used to be. 
Well, you know, it's it's in keeping with what our perspective has been around the longer term secular environment. I think we are decidedly not heading back to the great moderation era. And I think the, the era that we're probably transitioning into is one not of higher inflation in perpetuity, but probably more inflation volatility, maybe even more economic volatility, and probably a, a Fed, not, not just the, the U.S. central bank, but global central banks that look at the, the the, the past, call it experiments, with 0% interest rate policy or negative interest rate policy on the part of global central banks and say, you know what, there were probably more negative consequences uh, of th that policy. And I think the market is resetting to what is probably the absence of a Fed put, meaning a Fed that with any sign of weakness sees a green light to you know, take rates all the way back down to zero. And I think that's reflected in what's going on around the world, not just in the U.S. Okay. Yeah, true. And uh, can't lose sight of that as well. A few other central bank gyrations last few weeks playing into this too. Uh, maybe losing a little Japanese buyer along the way. Appreciate the uh, sleuthing through the market, guys. Uh, Cooper Howard, Lizzie and Saunders, great setup for us into uh, the big event for the week tomorrow, non-farm payrolls.